Hello and welcome back to another episode of How Long Does This Take? <laughs> in our last video, we were spinning up uh, Kubernetes clusters, one in EKS and one on-prem. And so we were doing the Amazon APIs for EKS and one on-prem with bare metal machines uh, in my garage. And we were using Sedero Labs Omni uh, just to see how fast it would take. And uh, unsurprising, EKS was pretty slow. So let's go ahead and show you what it looks like to do an upgrade process, right? Because we have these Kubernetes clusters, you don't create them all that often, maybe, so uh, you're not going to save a whole lot of time. But upgrades you do all the time. Uh, if you are keeping up to date on a Kubernetes cluster, you are upgrading three times a year. And so that is just amount of time that you're going to have to spend watching these things upgrade. And for the EKS cluster, we're going to have to go in three parts. We're going to upgrade the control plane, which is the managed Kubernetes side of it, the worker nodes, uh, and then you would also have to do managed add-ons. Um, we're not going to show that today, but we will show how long it takes just to delete a cluster. So we'll do an upgrade from Kubernetes 128 to 129 uh, for the control control plane and the worker nodes, and then we'll delete the cluster and just compare it. So I already have my cluster that we had last time, and we're going to wrap this command with the time command just to give us an actual output on how long it takes. And we're going to say EK, uh, EKS control upgrade cluster, the name of the cluster and what version we're going to go to. And of course, I forgot to say approve because we have to approve that change. So let's go ahead and get that, get that started and we'll let it sit while we upgrade the other cluster. So we're just gonna run that in the corner here and uh, you don't have to worry about it. We're just gonna run a timer on it. Um, we're not gonna make you sit through the entire process because this video shouldn't be that long, um, but let's go ahead and upgrade the other on-prem Kubernetes cluster we have just to see how it works. So here's my basic cluster, and again, this is the same sizing as a EKS cluster where I have three control plane nodes and two worker nodes. In the EKS cluster, I have two worker nodes that are that show up in my AWS accounts, and then the worker node or the control plane nodes are part of the EKS control plane. Those are all managed by AWS. And so how they get upgraded and what they do, uh, we don't know. Um, they they do stuff to them, and and they they change at some point, um, but that's one portion of it. So we have this, again, same version. We're running 128.4 as we have in the EKS cluster. Now let's go ahead and switch over to Omni and upgrade it. I could do this through the command line. I could do it through a lot of different ways. I'm gonna click the button. I'm just gonna go show you the GUI for it uh, just to show you what it does. And so here's our Kubernetes versions. And we went to 129 inside of EKS. So let's go to 129 here as well. And so that's gonna kick off the upgrade process. We'll start this timer just so we can keep it in sync and, and know how long this process takes to. Um, I don't have, because I'm not doing it with the command line, I'm gonna roughly estimate uh, how long that takes, but we'll see the process start here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start downloading all of the images and things that it needs to do the upgrade. So instead of starting the upgrade process before we have all the bits, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and download all those images and cache them so we know exactly what we need and we don't have to wait on like network hiccups or something else that's gonna interrupt us during the upgrade process. And in this case, because we're running this on bare metal machines, we're not doing the typical like uh, swap and replace it. We're not spinning up a new one, loading it into the cluster and then uh, replace it and then scaling down the old one. We're going to be replacing all of these machines in place. And so that the machines themselves will cycle out different components instead of being fully replaced by images. So even though this process is going to take a little bit of time, uh, I'm not going to um, sit here talking the entire time. We'll actually just go ahead and speed up bits of this. Uh, so again, you don't have to sit here and watch um, me just talk and stare at the screen because these upgrades do take a little bit of time. I will also say that like a single node upgrade process would be a lot faster uh, for various reasons. One is uh, I have less nodes to upgrade, um, but also the like etcd is probably one of the slowest components to do the upgrade on. So you have to uh, scale up etcd, or actually in this case on Omni, you have to scale down etcd. So there's only two nodes. You have to transition etcd to the new uh, 
uh, version and then you have to like add it back into the cluster. And so that process just takes a while because data replication is happening. We're making sure that it's healthy and validated in the cluster. That data backend rolling a distributed database takes time. It's not something you want to do quickly and we're not just going to YOLO it and say like, oh, it's probably fine. Um, if you have production workloads or something, you don't want the API server and etcd to go away. You want them to always be available so that we can call those APIs. And as you see here, um, we have some of the systems going through that process. If we uh, click on any of them, we can see uh, in our console logs what they're doing. And so we could watch them as they go from, this one's doing Kubernetes API server from old version to the new version. So it's it's doing that rolling of each component, again, individually, etcd, Kubernetes API, controller manager, scheduler. And it's gonna do those one at a time, just slowly in the process and, and then upgrade and make sure that everything's up and healthy. So as those cycle through, um, let's just go ahead and fast forward this and we'll see uh, who, not necessarily who finishes first because etcd, uh, or sorry, uh, because EKS is is gonna happen in two parts. So once it finishes their control plane, uh, we'll go ahead and show you the next stage of that. Um, is Omni, it's gonna do the entire cluster. It's gonna do the control plane and the worker nodes uh, for me without needing to uh, do multiple steps. So let's just fast forward and, and you can Sit here and, uh, and, and we'll get there. Okay, it looks like the EKS cluster uh, upgraded and that took eight minutes and 46 seconds um, to get the control plane upgraded. So our control plane uh, has now been upgraded and we are ready to upgrade the node group. And so the node group is the actual worker nodes. That's what lives uh, part of our cluster. It's in an auto scaling group. And again, this is going to scale up with all of the defaults. Um, it's only a two node uh, cluster, but it's going to add a node uh, at the new version and, and then remove the old nodes. So as we go through that cycle, uh, it's going to slowly replace each node in the cluster uh, one at a time. There's no workloads running on this. this is, these are both empty clusters. Things would take longer if you uh, were, were actually running workloads and needed to move things, persistent storage, all that stuff. Different story. But in this case, we're just doing basic uh, Kubernetes maintenance for like, hey, how long should this roughly take uh, for the smallest, most, uh, most optimal path? Um, so let's see how this takes. Um, and what we have to do actually here is we're going to get the uh, node groups for that uh, cluster so we can see which node groups um, we're, we're going to upgrade. Uh, this is like one layer of abstraction above like an auto scaling group. So a node group is just an auto scaling group, uh, but it gets a different name when it's attached to an EKS cluster. Uh, so I need to remember how that works. And uh, we'll do up upgrade at node group cluster name. Uh, node group name, and then what version we're going to upgrade to. And again, we're going to wrap all of this in the time command just so we get some outputs, and we're going to say 129 so we can match the uh, version of Kubernetes that uh, we're trying to move to. So now our node groups are being upgraded, or the one node group is being upgraded, and again, more node groups you have in the cluster, uh, the more you have to do this. So if you have 10 node groups, um, you're going to have to uh, do this 10 times. And in this case, we're just doing one. Let's check in on the uh, Omni cluster and see how things are going over there. All right, and there we go with the Omni cluster. And so we just finished upgrading all of the nodes, the work, the work control plane and the worker nodes uh, finished cycling through to 129.4. So if I go back into the cluster, I can see that um, everything is up and ready. We are on 129.4 um, and, and we're ready to go. So since that is already done, let's go ahead and upgrade the operating system too. Um, again, this is uh, actually, first of all, let's look at the bootstrap manifest. Um, this is something that happens in a Kubernetes cluster with uh, things that get deployed by default for you. And so in this case, we have an upgrade to uh, the cube proxy. So cube proxy has a new version and we want to make sure that we get that upgraded because we did upgrade the Kubernetes cluster and we want to match that version of cube proxy. And this is a controller that runs inside of Talos and knows, hey, I'm running this version of Kubernetes. Uh, I should have this version of the cube proxy installed. So we can just apply that change and it's going to roll that uh, for us. And this is kind of like managed add-ons with EKS, uh, but a little bit different in how they actually work. 
Okay, it looks like that EKS cluster is upgraded now. The uh, worker nodes have, have upgraded. It took uh, just over 18 minutes. And so in total we have, oh, I don't know what's that. Um, about 27 minutes or so to uh, do a cluster upgrade uh, with the control plane and the worker nodes. And now let's just go ahead and delete the cluster. Let's see um, how long that takes and, and get everything uh, cleaned up. And in this case, we do get one single delete command because the uh, node group is attached to the cluster. It knows to delete the worker nodes and then delete the uh, API server. So let's go ahead and let that cycle through and see how long a cluster delete takes. And, and again, this erases the machines uh, from access basically. Like they, they go away. Um, we're not paying anything for them versus, versus the Omni cluster where they're gonna go back into like a pool of of machines. So let's wait for this and uh, see how long it takes. And there's the EKS delete uh, command, uh, 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, we are all cleaned up. And so all in all for a cluster creation, a uh, cluster upgrade and a cluster delete, it took us around an hour um, to go through the process. And again, we're leaving all of the defaults for both of these platforms. There are things you can do to optimize uh, upgrade process or, or things of that nature to say like, I wanna upgrade more of them at once or, um, but also things that would slow down this process if you have workloads that have pod disruption budgets and whatnot. So you need to take these numbers just, just like basic defaults on how it might look for you, uh, but this is nothing like the real world. Um, and last step we want to do is we wanted to go ahead and destroy this cluster and uh, just see how it goes. Um, in that case, again, we'll just we'll we'll click the UI here, um, see roughly how long it takes on this timer, and uh, and see where it goes. And and for this, it's going to. Um, put these machines back into a pool of machines that I can access uh, to create new clusters with. Um, if they were VMs and I wanted them to actually like go away, I could delete the VMs obviously. Uh, but this is formatting the hard drives and rebooting the machines back into a maintenance mode uh, so that I can access them and add them to clusters again. And just like all of our upgrades and everything else, it's going to do that in the uh, order we should be doing it in, where it's going to up, uh, it's going to delete the worker nodes first, and then delete the uh, control plane. And so it just wipes those disks and and puts them back in the pool. So there you have it, the upgrade, the full cycle of Kubernetes clusters. Uh, that was the upgrades and deletions. And that's roughly the timing. So. Um, again, I'm trying to run this in real time. I'm not trying to do any tricks or special cuts. I just recorded this whole video, ran through all those steps, and then uh, we spliced it together with the timers running uh, with adjustments for, for making them uh, real time. I actually wasn't timing this locally. Um, so until I edit this, I don't know the final times um, for uh, for some of this stuff. So um, we're just gonna figure that out as we go. The environments are pretty different as far as uh, how hardware works and how software works and how you can replace machines versus upgrade in place. All of that stuff is very different in different environments. But this gives you a general idea of how the process should work and what you should be doing if you are managing and upgrading these clusters. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.